Segregation was widely accepted in the United States in the 1940s. Mexicans and other minorities were denied access to restaurants, swimming pools, movie theaters, and even schools. So when Sylvia Mendez, a nine-year-old of Mexican and Puerto Rican descent, tried to register at an all-white school in California, she was denied. I loved it. Manicure lawn and, and that beautiful palm trees and the playground. I'll never forget the playground. Sylvia and her brothers were told they had to attend the Mexican school, two wooden shacks on a dirt lot next to a cow pasture. Sylvia's parents, Gonzalo and Felicitas, had abandoned their education in order to help support their families. Now, they wanted to give their children the education they had been denied. Sylvia's father complained. And the next day he went and spoke to the principal and he was informed, we don't allow Mexicans here. And then the following day, he went and spoke to the superintendent of schools there in Westminster, and he says, no, you can't go there. And then he went to the Orange County School Board and spoke to him, and, and that's when he was informed that four cities had decided to build separate schools for the Mexicans, and we had to go to the Mexican school. And in those schools, no matter how smart you were, how gifted you were, how able you were, you were going to be treated to an industrial education. The Mendez family take their savings and hire a civil rights attorney, David Marcus. He had recently won a lawsuit on behalf of Mexican Americans in nearby San Bernardino. My parents weren't just fighting for us because when she, they went and spoke to the superintendents, they said, Gonzalo, if you, leave, if you stop this lawsuit or whatever you're thinking about, your children can go to the school. And my father said, no, I'm not going to stop this. I'm not just fighting for my children. I'm fighting for all the children. Gonzalo and Felicitas decided that they would help to pay. Well, they ended up paying virtually everything, paying the lawyer as well as paying their friends to take a day off of work and pay for their work. Sylvia's father convinces four other Mexican families to unite and join their lawsuit. The most shocking testimony came when James L. Kent, the superintendent of the Garden Grove School District, took the stand and said he believed people of Mexican descent were intellectually, culturally, and morally inferior to European Americans. Even if a Latino child had the same academic qualifications as a white child, he would never allow them to enroll in a white school. That superintendent had written a thesis and said how Mexicans were immoral, how we were dirty, how we had bugs in us, and how we did not belong to, we did not belong in a white school. Two weeks of testimony continues. No one can predict the outcome since segregation is so rampant and accepted in the country. The Mexican community argues, separate is not equal. On February 18, 1946, after an eight-month deliberation, Judge Paul J. McCormick makes a landmark ruling in favor of Mendez. The judge made a very interesting take in his judgment in which he said, segregated schools are unconstitutional. He said what segregated schools do is that they create inequality when there is none. And this is a violation of the 14th Amendment. But it wasn't over. The Westminster School District filed an appeal. The case had drawn national attention. And this time, when the trial resumed, they had the support of the NAACP the League of United Latin American Citizens, the Japanese American Citizens League, and the World Jewish Congress. On April 14, 1947, the judges in the Court of Appeals in San Francisco ruled in favor of the Mendez family again. Following the court decision, Governor Earl Warren signs a law that allows all children in California to go to school together, regardless of race, ethnicity, or language. The Mendez versus Westminster School District case paved the way for desegregation of schools in America. 
Seven years later, Brown versus the Board of Education desegregated schools in the entire country. Sylvia went on to graduate college and didn't think much about her family's court case until decades later after her father died and her mother became seriously ill. And it wasn't until she was uh, dying that I retired just to take care of her. And she said, Sylvia, somebody has to go out there and talk about the story. This is history of the United States and you have to go out there and start talking about these brave Latinos, how they stood up against the establishment and fought and how they won and how California was the first state to be integrated. History of California, it cannot be forgotten. And we did it, we fought and we won, she said. For more than 25 years, she's been doing just that, speaking at schools and even before the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. No one knows about this case, Mendes versus Westminster, how five families fought. What Sylvia Mendes is doing is very important. That is, not allowing for this important change that occurred to be forgotten. Outraged that their daughter had to attend a segregated school, Sylvia's parents linked arms with other Latino families to fight injustice in a California federal court. In 2011, Sylvia was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Obama, and she couldn't hold back the tears. I was crying because finally somebody had realized what my parents had done. That, that Medal of Freedom was all about my, the, the fight that the five families and my parents, how they stood up against the establishment, and how they fought, and how they never even got it. Uh, Gracias, Gonzalo, gracias. Uh, Ramirez, gracias. Guzman, gracias. Palomino, for what they had done. And then there it was, finally being given to us, the Medal of Freedom, showing that, you know, they, that, that they had done the right thing. <laughs> Today, there are two schools and a library named after Sylvia's parents, and the community of Westminster recently voted to erect a monument in their honor. We're putting together a monument of, of Gonzalo Mendez and, and just, to, just celebrating what happened, the, the breakthrough the community had and the, and the challenges we overcame, and to show the community what's possible. We can fight bigotry, we can fight injustice, we can fight anything that's coming and hurled at us. Because if we all unite, everybody will join you. And that's what I tell students. If you stand up for something that's right, people will join you and they will help you because they know what is right and we all know what is wrong. Sylvia continues to use her own money and resources in telling her story. She hopes that by educating the public about her family's legal victory over 70 years ago, it will spark change for Latinos today. For Sylvia Mendez, La lucha sigue. On behalf of the Board of Directors and the staff of the United States Leadership Institute and our 36th National Conference, we salute you.